Hello and welcome to the Scottish National Equestrian Centre here in Edinburgh in Scotland for the final of the Dodson Horrell Masterclass of 2019. We've had some wonderful ambassadors that have brought us some really good insights and educational tips for 2019 to bring you up to speed with the likes of dressage, show jumping and eventing. Tonight it is the worlds of eventing and show jumping that are combined. Jeff Billington from the world of show jumping and Caroline Powell. She is here tonight to bring you guys some wonderful training techniques and we hope you can take some of them away. Whether you want to be the top of the sport or maybe just hacking out, they will bring you some really good insights into how you can achieve some great possibilities. It's set out evening here in Scotland for 2019 end of season and we hope you enjoy the next couple of hours. So I think without further ado, we will start this evening's final masterclass of 2019. We've had amazing attendance throughout the year. We started off with Richard Jones, Tom McKeown from the World of Eventing. We've had Richard Davison and Mark Phillips, Captain Mark Phillips, Lauren Huff from Show Jumping, Zara Tyndall from Eventing, and then our last one at, uh, in Somerset with Laura Collett and Harry Mead. But tonight, we're hugely grateful to welcome here to the Scottish National Equestrian Centre two of the world's very best. From the world of show jumping, Jeff Billington, and from the world of eventing, Caroline Powell. We're very lucky to have the ambassadors for Dodson and Horrell, and uh, we would encourage you whether it be now or in the break, go and see the nutritionists who are here, Sam and Hannah, who are down at the little tent down there at the gazebo. Go and see them if you have any nutritional advice on feeding for your equines or your canines, in fact. Go and see them. Uh, Jeff Billington and Caroline Powell this evening to host two demonstrations and an opportunity for you as well to ask questions. We're going to mix it up a bit this evening. We've followed protocol in the past, but at the request of Caroline and Jeff, I'm going to be a bit, little bit of an Annika Rice, run between the audience and ask a few questions in the middle. Any of you that are old enough to remember Annika Rice, that is. Um, and, uh, well, let's start off then. A little bit about Mr. Jeff Billington here. I mean, who doesn't know Jeff Billington? Household name, synonymous, oh, Caroline's already laughing, synonymous with uh, British show jumping at its dizzying heights in the 70s and 80s. And uh, since then, Jeff has continued to be a household name as Britain's, one of Britain's top show jumping riders. He boasts both European and World Championship team bronze medals and has won numerous Grand Prix. Jeff is a much valued team member of uh, Nations Cup to secure nine Nations Cup wins and appearing almost 50 times. Did you know that, Jeff? 50? He's not even that 50. old. No, he's not even 50, is he? No. <laughs> uh, 50 tonight, <laughs> tonight he's joined by the lippy, Caroline Powell. <laughs> Caroline, who's representing New Zealand Don't at two... Don't tune on. Shh! Muta. <laughs> Two Olympic Games, winning Team Bronze in London, 2012, and also two World Equestrian Games, picking up a Team Bronze in Kentucky back in 2010. Best known for her long-term partnership with the wonderful Grey, Lenamore, that took her to great success, winning uh, Burley, and uh, I mean, he was just one of the best horses that she rode, but she's got so many nice horses coming up through the ranks. And in association with the crowd's favourite and the gutsy grey, Lenamore, Caroline finished 20th at this year's Land Rover Burley Horse Trials with the uh, very, very promising up and coming <laughs> on the brash. Caroline and I go back quite a long way. <laughs> she wanted me to mention this because I was doing the commentary for Burley Dressage uh, a couple of years ago, <laughs> I'm lying. She didn't talk to me for quite a long time. No, that's um, not true. That she was riding, true. riding a very, very nice horse. You can hear horse. his story, and then I'm going to tell my story. <laughs> she was riding a Shut nice horse. Shut up and let him finish. Called Spice Sensation. 
and I was doing the commentary in the um, it was in, in the grandstands, and she was riding this horse called Spice Sensation, and this mare came across the arena doing this amazing walk. German walk. Like this. And I, I said very Quietly. unpolitically, um, Hitler. And they all laughed. With that, Spice Sensation got a little bit tight. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Right, let's rewind. So Spice Sensation, she's the most amazing jumper. And in the dressage, she's quite tricky. Okay, so you're... <laughs> Very tricky. So we're sitting there in the, in the dressage doing this walk, and I'm thinking, oh, this isn't going too bad for her. And next thing I hear all this laughing, cackling through the crowd, and I'm thinking, oh, God, here we go. Because dressage is sometimes a little bit intimidating because there's one person and quite a few people watching and a few judges, and I'm thinking, that's Spencer Sturm. I'm going to kill him when I see him. <laughs> so totally understanding why he's saying it, but totally sort of thinking, no, no your timing's not great, Spence. <laughs> so I cut off, and I stomped over to Spencer, <laughs> literally with my German march, <laughs> and gave him what for. And I don't think he spoke to me for about two, two months, two years. <laughs> it was quite a long time. I went up to, to give her a hug, and she went, don't you dare. You can get off. <laughs> I'm not speaking to you. <laughs> Dressage anyway. is very intimidating, though. <laughs> anyway, so that's all the uh, frivolities out of the way for now. Um, it's going to be an entertaining evening. I hope you enjoy the next couple of hours because huh? we've got two of the best entertainers in the world, basically, in the world of equestrian. And uh, without further ado, then, I'll hand you over to the one, the two, Jeff Billington, Caroline Powell. <laughs> oh, Rolf. <laughs> <laughs> Keep clapping, keep lift. clapping. Go lift, go lift, go lift. <laughs> hey up. Welcome hey up. to Wacky Races. We nearly had an accident, Jeff. <laughs> I hope you lot can understand her because I can't tell a word she says. <laughs> so tonight, Jeff's translating Kiwi into English into Scottish. And I'm doing Scottish to English <laughs> to Kiwi. <laughs> uh, and then welcome, we Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Caroline's on a, a four-year-old horse. Uh, Sandra Low Mitchell has very kindly brought me one of Harrier's horses, the Bay Stallion, and the spotted one. She said she bred it. I thought it was a Dalmatian dog, but there you go. Uh, that the spotted one is seven years old, and it's ridden by Brody, and the Bay one is ridden by one of our German friends, Annie. So let's give them a round of applause to start with. Well, that's good. Nobody fell off. Perfect. <laughs> uh, Caroline. Jeff, I'm over how are you, here. How are you going to start with your horse? How am I going to start? Well, I'm doing very well. This has been and worked probably about three weeks, and... I was sitting watching videos of demos and stuff, and I saw you taking bridles off with Ollie Town in, and I thought, I'm not doing that, and I saw loads of things, and I thought, do you know what, what people actually need to see is the real life with a four-year-old. Yeah. So I brought my greenest one. All right. Just for fun. Well, it looks it's very, it's got its head tucked in, and it's trotting down round nicely. How, <laughs> how have you got it doing that? Well, it just goes like that. All my four-year-olds go with their heads stuck up my nose. <laughs> yeah, but you don't try enough circles, do you? Running away. <laughs> no, this is a very nice horse. He, um, you can hear, you know, he is teeth grinding and he's just showing a wee bit of tension. I don't mind that because his neck's in the wrong place and as time goes on, he'll extend and release and, um, you know, he'll let go. But this is a big atmosphere for him. He literally has been in work. He was broken as a three-year-old and then... Um, this one and actually another four-year-old did me a little bit of damage in Valentine's Day on February the 14th. I was leading them out to the field and I quite nicely got stuck in between them, one either side as you do, as you're not meant to, and uh, it carried off down a track for quite a long time and I got kicked in the ribs and the stomach and one broke my finger. So my beginning of last year was a little bit slow. Um, these Come guys, on, stop talking and do some work, will you? Get off of you. Tell him a story. <laughs> so these guys have literally done very little. This We've is only got three hours, you know. 
Um, he is very, very green. He's a lovely horse. And, you know, I thought people actually need to see what you do with a four-year-old that is a little bit hot and a wee bit feisty. And, you know, he's a lovely horse. And you'll probably see him at badminton. What's up, Spence? What's, what's happening? Am I falling off? I don't know what's happening here. Oh. One of these... Oh, I know what's happening there. adjusted. You've heard of pee off. Well, that's doing a pee off. All right, girls, you can walk a minute, please. We're going to let Caroline strut her stuff to start with. Strut my stuff. And then Is that if better? I can, if I can see a, a little slot, I'm going to dive through it. A little spot. A little <laughs> slot. You see, Jeff wouldn't ride in this first lot because he said, these jumps are too small. I can't fit through them. <laughs> right, come on, tell us what you're doing. <laughs> So, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a little bit of a trot pole. Um, as you can see, we're going to have a crash. Um, this horse, he's a little bit fresh and a little bit sort of excited and very tight and tense. That is very normal for a four-year-old coming into this atmosphere. Have no issue with that. He'll get better. You'll see him at badminton one year. Spence will be commentating on saying he's doing the frog march again. Um, <laughs> what we're very aware I of... I hope you lot can understand her because I can't tell a word you say. Can everybody yeah. understand, apart from Jeff? Oh, yeah. yeah. Shut up, Jeff. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do some two trot poles, and what I'm just looking for is him just to be not as rushy as that, take his time, a little bit nice and relaxed. I'll tell you what, girls, while Caroline is doing this, you can also come and join in the trot poles. We'll work together. Oh. Okay. I thought you said there were trot poles. That was a little... Well... Jeff, one thing I was wanting to discuss with you is define a dressage horse. All right. One that doesn't show jump. Define a show, <laughs> define a show jumper. So now she's, without you knowing, she's letting it walk through those poles while what, she's talking to me. One that doesn't go cross country. Huh? <laughs> define you've got, to, you've got to watch her, she cheats. <laughs> one that doesn't do dressage or show, or show jumping. <laughs> so... <laughs> Mine's Come not on, a dressage then. horse. Trot poles, you said. Yeah, but you know, he's not jumping those because he's not in front of the leg, he's not, rela he's not relaxed good. at all. You'd find that good, I'm not thinking that's Okay, quite Brody, so let's do you do the same. Anna, get in line. Get in line, oh, Anna. That's a little bit quick. Oh. Brody, when you, can, when you come to the first pole, don't drop your hands and let it go faster. We just want a nice rhythm, keep a contact. Way up, way. See, that's a jumper. <laughs> Can't do dressage. Mine is perfect. Oh, it's a bloody woodpecker. <laughs> Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're having show jumping in Braille. <laughs> would you guys, when you're when you're doing this sort of exercise, would you mind? Do you let them make a mistake? You let them find their feet. What are you? No. What are you? What are you, what are you Bence, if for? they don't make mistakes, they don't learn whoa, a thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, you see, that keep might be an event. Keep a contact and don't lean forward too much. Oh God, mine's falling over already. Enjoy your trip. Beautiful. Okay, <laughs> so he's gone from jumping over the whole lot to putting a few strides. That's fine. Ooh. 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 That's good. <laughs> Did you All see right. that? But, you know, this is real life with a four-year-old that hasn't had very much work. And also, can I say, we're, we're training the horses as well as the riders. You know, the horses have got to know where every corner is. So keep your contact, sit up, sit up, keep your contact. Good. Oh, no, it's still a show right. jumper. Tell us what you're looking for. What, what are you after here? Oh, just not touch the poles like that. Perfect. Lovely. To trot over like that. <laughs> we want, even at this early stage, we're looking for a nice, even rhythm. That's good, Brody. Okay. Oop, heads up. It's not brute force. It's having the horse between hand and leg, keeping a contact. We don't want to throw the reins away. At the same time, we don't want to sock the horse in the teeth. See. You see a lot of riders riding round, Caroline. And they're always trying to pull the head back. Ooh, we want to ride, ride the back end into the front end, don't we? Well, we do, Jeff. But also what we need is we need these shoulders to be rideable because if you can't move the shoulder, you can't get to where you want. 
And as you know, if you can't move the shoulder going around the corner, you're just that little bit, tiny bit off that fence, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So all the time I'm trotting around, yeah, he's a bit tight, but I'm moving, doing a little Keep leg yielding. straight, Danny, look straight in front of you, don't look down. That's brilliant, well done. Caroline, tell us why then, when you did that, you made a little mistake over the last pull, why did you turn him so sharply? Were you trying to teach him a lesson? Yeah, so what I'm trying to do is just get him just to relax, get the shoulders moving a little bit more. You know, he's a tight horse. We know that. We can see that. But what we've got to do is when we get him in these situations is Good. break up the body. He's got to be loose through the shoulder. He's got to be loose through the ribs. He's got to be loose all over the show because otherwise he's not rideable. You know. Come down it the other way now, girls, please. He's a wee bit overbent. That's fine. I don't mind. But what I see, what I can feel is he's starting to move through the ribs a bit more. And that, I'm quite happy with it. Oh, we've got questions, Jeffy. That's good. Okay, I'm going to pass it along. Perfect. Question down here. Uh, so, Jeff, bear with us a second. We're going to pass the microphone along. <laughs> oh, it's like pass the parcel and the music stops. Caroline, why have you got your reins bridged? Well, good question. So when I had my little accident, and Jeff's going to tell me off for talking too much again, I broke my finger. And what I learned was if I actually um, take my hand away, I don't need my hand because I've got the other hand. So I'm quite happy to ride with one hand at the moment because the other one's not very good. So you'll see I went through a stage in April <laughs> and I shouldn't have been riding and I did and I had the rein wrapped around my whip which probably wasn't all that technically correct and it pulled me out of the plate so that stopped me going to badminton that stopped a lot of things I had a little wake up call of you know I can't actually ride <laughs> to the level I want to at the moment so I had to take a bit of a bit of a rain check which is why you know, last year wasn't the most fantastic season but you know that's life so I've learnt different ways of just giving my finger, finger a bit of a break and in actual fact, riding with one hand makes you actually ride forward rather than backwards. And, you know, like this horse here, if you were to put the reins into one hand and carry the, the hands forward, it would actually take the rein forward a wee bit more. So there's, there's pros and cons. One rein is fine. You know, when you actually go cantering up the gallops, you bridge your reins, which is eventually, effectively, effectively the same thing. I go at hacking because it's quite cold down south. Yeah, I, I think it's... Uh... Oh... I've Look, we used to have enough. the old Swedish trainer called Lars Ederholm, and he often made us ride with one hand. And sometimes, if a rider's trying to do, do too much with their hands, <laughs> then it makes yeah. you keep the horse straight and keep it coming forward from behind. You end up pushing them forward, riding them forward, as opposed to pulling them around in front. Yeah. You know, I can do the same thing with one hand as what I can with two now, sometimes. And also, with bridging the reins, I... I find myself doing it a lot. I look down, I don't realise I'm doing it. But it stops you going with your, with your hands all over the place. You see a lot of riders, they're doing all this. It's like, it's like they're walking on a tightrope and they're doing all this. So they're giving the horse lots of different messages. Go that way, no, go that way, go straight, whoa, come back. But if you've got a bridge in your reins, you can only go so far. So imagine if you've got a little box in front of you and your hands don't go outside that box. You can go there, you can go there, you can go there, and you can come here. And I think that's a very, very good thing to keep telling yourself when you're riding. Back in your box, Jeff. Back but in also, your box. Jeff, one thing you didn't know about me, I'm in therapy. A what? Finger therapy. It's the wrong finger, isn't it? <laughs> finger therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be very good at that. Um, you, also, you also notice that when Caroline's riding around with a bridge rein, that even though she's on a four-year-old, he's staying in a, in a perfect balance, he's staying in a frame, he's very happy to work there. Like she said, she can work with one hand doing the same that two hands mm. can do. Also, mm. tell them also what you're about to have done, because you, you've had a fairly horrific 12 months. <laughs> Not only with your hand, but also you're about to have the pins and plates out of your ankle as well. Yeah, no, a couple of years ago, and I, I didn't fall off. I got um, just so, slightly squashed against a fence, and um, quite a funny story. Oh, here we go. Hilarious. Here we, go canter. Um, we went down to uh, a place called Heronsville, which has a picture frame thing, and I didn't realise at the time the horse I was riding didn't like the overhang on the, on the fences. So I came cantering along, a little bit underpowered, 
hands up, I was wrong. Right, and girls. So, it can, literally, be quiet. It literally just sort of squashed us into listen, the fence. Let, let me just tell them what to do and We've then you can keep talking. We've only got be quiet. We're cantering down these poles, girls. <laughs> Carry on, Caroline. Um, so anyway, so I went and my underpowered canter got squashed against the fence and realised that actually it maybe had done something quite bad to my ankle and um, got off and sat on the fence and at the time Greg and a girl that was working for us were, were coming down um, to catch up with us because we were trying to ride a horse down and then um, school all the way back to cut time. So <clears throat> I get down there and I squash my leg against the, well, squash my ankle against the fence and uh, they were like, what's happened? And I was like, oh, I think I might have broken my ankle. And uh, Greg goes, well, we can't leave it on that. We've <laughs> got to get the horse over the fence. So I get off, can't put my foot down. I'm literally sitting there in agony. He gets on, puts my spurs, everything else in his pocket, gets on the horse, and uh, <laughs> he, he gets fired and over through the picture frame as well. Well, ends up on the ground. And the poor girl that's with us, she's just like, oh, my God, she was 16 years old. We had the big lorry. How am I going to get home? <laughs> So the pair of us rolling around the floor thinking this is absolutely just crazy. Um, anyway, so I went off to hospital, ended up getting pins and all that kind of stuff in my leg. And next week, which is probably why we've got pretty raw four-year-olds here, um, I'm getting Keep all the pins straight. and stuff out my ankle. Don't anyway. go forward with your body, Brody. Carry oh. on, Jeff. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're just trying to get the horses cantering down here in a rhythm. Mm. We don't want them to extend. Sit up, sit up, keep your contact, sit up. And as you can see, they're rushing a little bit. Are you going to count to yours down, Caroline? No, I'm going to trot over the jumps. All right. I'm going to fall you All right. Well, you carry on doing what you're doing, I'll do what I'm doing. That's good. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can see there, Brody's horse is speeding up. Fair day. That's good. Wunderbar. Stop a minute. Whoa. Oh, you carry on. You do it. There's no yeah, point me telling her what to do. She, she keeps going anyway. I think she, tell, she informs me that 14 years ago, I used to be teaching at Row Allen. And Caroline used to book the first slot on a 8 o'clock on a, on a morning. And she'd come galloping in the <laughs> ring, talking and talking and talking. And I'd just watch her gallop round, jump, jump, jump. She'd, then she'd be on another one, jump, jump, jump. She'd jump eight horses in an hour, and I didn't say a word. <laughs> and she'd worked it out. That it was cheaper to book a lesson with me where she could jump eight horses in an hour than go and pay to, to pay the entry fees of jumping eight horses. She used me. Brody, I want you to canter round and then stop the horse in between me and the, me and the bricks here. I want you to canter round and stop. Please, when you go to stop, sit down, lean back at the same time that you're pulling. So we get the horses to listen to our upper body weight. Is that better? Turn the corner, get straight. Jeff, Whoa. I was worried this was going to turn into a heavy breathing contest. <laughs> Good. Count around again. Go on, Caroline, keep talking. Keep talking, Caroline. <laughs> you lost your but tongue. I'm good at that. <laughs> you pricked us up nicely. <laughs> One more time, Brody. Canter, right, so canter, while Jeff is mucking around with his stop. poles. Good. And you know, poles are very important because you can do so much work I'll over poles. You can get them soft, around, you can make them beer, stay in a rhythm, you can make them stay in a shape, but I'm bored of that. <laughs> are you sure that's four year old? Yeah. Yeah, no, it is four. You must have been doing a lot of practicing. <laughs> Come on, Brody, canter around now. When you get between me and the post, sit up so the horse thinks you're going to stop and then keep going. And now put your leg on. Oh, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, you the same, please. Canter between me and the, me and the post and stop. Yeah, it's definitely full. <laughs> Caroline, do you always trot your young horses to the fences first before you canter? Sorry? <laughs> do you always trot them to start with? Yeah, no, with? I do. I do, because, you know, they have to learn, especially what we're doing here, okay? So very important what Jeff's doing here is because the horse has to listen on the approach to the fence. But also, when you start teaching them these skinny things, 
they have to actually understand what they're doing. And the slower you go, the more time they have to think, and the more time they've actually got to make a reaction with it, isn't it? The faster you go, the more you get a huge reaction from them. And it's just, if you slow them all the way down, you can keep them straight. Good. <laughs> We've also, you've also started out off over a very narrow viaduct wall. Would you not start off over a cross pole or an upright on a four-year-old? I mean, we're, talk, we're talking, trying to educate everybody here and also everybody, you know, me and everybody else as well. But you literally trotted off the left rein to a very narrow, one single viaduct wall, which a lot of horses, let's face it, would have said, ah, uh, no. Yeah, but a lot of horses haven't had me for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we set these up and, and for these guys, they're going to just get used to going through the, through the viaducts and stuff. You know... <clears throat> horses just keep, keep going, keep going. literally have to go where you tell them. Okay? Oh, right, and if they make a mistake, they make a mistake. And then woo, we start telling them you know, what to do, how to do it. You don't get too worried about it. If they make a mistake, that's the best thing because you then know they understand what, what you're on about. But very important to say to the horses, if they make a mistake, that's okay. Oh, as long as they good. understand. Horses learn good. by repetitive strain injury. Okay, so if you do it and do it and do it again, you know, they get more and more comfortable with it and then they are absolutely with you. If they don't understand it and you go faster, they then start taking hold of the bridle and start telling you what they can't do as opposed to what they can do. And let's say per se that you, your horse came for the first time to that fence and went to run out. What would you do? Would you let your horse run out? Would you stand him at the fence and say, look, understand what's in front of you take it on board, that's what's in front of you, not make a fuss of it and then come again or... Okay, so we... if I was coming trotting in here and I always start and trot, okay, the horse is looking, not looking where it's going because it doesn't understand. Stop Simply walk up, okay, you're not going to jump it, and stand, give it a little pat, okay? And just say, that's all it is. Yeah, that's all it is. You know, simplify it and make them small. Make them small so you don't actually have to make a big issue of it. The bigger the fence is, the more, more issue it has to do. You can come and walk. Okay? No issue with any of that. Okay? For me, the slower the better, the more they understand. If they make a mistake, you go back, you do it again. You, you make them understand and you, you get on with it. Jeff's doing young horse grid work. No, I'm listening to what you're saying. No, you're not. So Jeff's doing poles, and I'm going to go and do my brushes. No, I'm making a little jump now. We'll leave that one there. So this is, this is express learning on young horses, okay? Anyone else got any questions, by the way, as we're going? Yeah. No hands? No? No questions? It's oh. totally easy. <laughs> you know, the easier you make it for them, the more explainable, the better it is. I'm just going to walk up to this one. Okay? I've got to hold of my neck strap because I don't want to catch him in the mouth too much. Don't you go too far. I know he's clocked it. Has he, has he, has he? No. Okay, no. Perfect. Huh? <laughs> In the meantime, we're cantering down. <laughs> In the meantime, Jeff's cantering on. <laughs> I've got a pole in front, a pole behind, and I've made a little fence in the middle. So we don't do anything different than what we're doing going down the, down the trotting poles. Oh, we've got that again. Okay. So that's perfect, okay? Now this is what I really wanted to happen today because now we can teach you what to do. So we're going to put two poles up. Come on, Greg. Come on, Greg. Give Greg, give Greg. Greg has been a huge part of Caroline's career. Give Greg a hand, a round of applause, everyone. Okay. Not that great. Actually, Greg, just take that away for now. Okay, so we break it right down to very, very simple. Okay? Ooh, baby. Ooh. <laughs> you know, but that is the reaction that you'd expect from a young horse. Absolutely perfect, so I'm going to do it again. But, you know, if they make a mistake, you break it right down... It becomes wee, very simple. Steady. Ooh, 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 shit, we're going over the side there, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> shit. What? Well, I didn't look at my wing mirrors then. <laughs> Talk about seeing spots. 
Oh, we're going to make it even simpler. I'm too busy laughing at Caroline. <laughs> we might need to make it a wee bit wider. If I'd, you stand there, I'd, Jeff, we're I'd not going to go I'd anywhere. I'll give you a lead, but I can't fit through that gap. <laughs> I've got all the ingredients of William Fox Pitt. I just need rolling out. <laughs> That's why you wouldn't do this session. <laughs> I'm like a weebly wobbly toy. If I fall off, I just wobble back to my feet again. I'm sure we could force you through. <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, the horse is learning stuff. It's learning to go through a small gap, which is why we set this up. Okay. Brody, can I have a ride on your heavy. horse, please? This is like having two lessons in one, isn't it? Express. <laughs> Okay, see now I'm seeing his ears aren't going down, he's not that bothered, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to trot. <laughs> Hopefully. Ooh. We're going to get there. Now you guys are learning something, aren't you? Oh God, Jeff, are you going to squeeze through this hole? Okay, so you can see, and I was probably going, oh, hang on, sorry. Ooh. We really are in control. You can see when he's going through, we've just got a little ear thing going on, which is absolutely fine. That's him just testing out the boundaries. Not the horses, you know, they, they don't like to go through small spaces. And Caroline, talk us through that, because it's very important when you're riding individual horses, because obviously they're all very different. But, but riding him, he first went to that and was suspicious, mm -hmm. even more suspicious. Now you've broken it down. Yeah. You've gone back to walk. You watching, you're watching his ears. You're watching what he's thinking. Yeah, and I'm watching understanding, his ears and understanding his what he's doing. <laughs> he's still, he's still a bit suspicious. So would you, would you, as a rider, as a trainer, um, continue? Would you now, now build that up, or would you leave that for today? Would you, you know, talking to everybody here, would you leave that for today? Leave that as it is, just with the poles up on the side, or would you build it up? No, Spence. What? So, now what we're going to do is we're going to put that little um, black thing in. Okay, so it's a little bit of a pole for it. It says exactly the same question, only in a different way. Not bothered. He can do what he wants to do. But what I need to know is when I go, say, go, okay, he's going to go. Good. Yeah. What I'm trying Jeff, to do... Jeff, Jeff. What? I need to put a thing on you as well. Huh? Jeff, can you try and fit through that gap? He's just put a condom on me. A what? A number? Condom. On my microphone. <laughs> oh, Spence, were you not a bit worried about coming up tonight? <laughs> okay, so there we're just linking a few bits and pieces together. You know, he's trotting through that hole quite nicely, and then we're putting the little viaduct, which we've already done. You can see his head and neck's getting a bit longer. He's getting tired, which is good. The grinding's getting less. I'm happy with that. That's nice. You know, this horse is learning. Right. So Greg <laughs> is putting up that. So we're going to put him to the brush now and see what happens. Caroline, you say he's a, a teeth grinder. Is that a nervous disposition? Is that part of his demeanor? What, I mean, is, what is that? No, he's only just started this, which is a wee bit annoying. But because he's so tight in the neck, you know, he's just going to do that. It, it'll go away. I'm not bothered about it. But he needs just to do things and get out and see things. And let's see how this goes. This People goes. would... Uh, okay, let you concentrate. Hang on, we've got a straight line. Yeah. Oh, Can you yes. make me a good Ooh. boy? Can you make me a cross ball over here, please? So a lot of people Bring would. Bring the balls in and make a cross ball. A lot of people, Caroline, would worry balls about in. that as they're working through the levels and working through what they're doing with the horses in training. When so he didn't start. He wasn't a teeth grinder. Then developed this with hmm. more training. You say you're not worried about it. For, for everybody here, for us all watching, why? What is, what is, is, why? is that just right. a nervous so thing that comes everybody in? everybody do this, okay? And when you put your head down, and which is what he's doing, when he first came out, he was very tight through the neck. So he's doing this, and then everything becomes very tight through here, tight through the jaw. You know, he's just got to learn to take the bit, a little bit more forward and relax a bit, and then that's going to, you know, he's a wee bit choppy in his trot at the moment because that's tension. I don't mind that because that will go away once he starts working through from behind, once he starts taking the bit and the bridle out there, okay? So I have no issue with that. This is just a bit of a four-year-old stage they go through. Do you get worried about it? Not really. What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> you keep talking. I'm making a right cross. No, I'm just watching. What are you doing? I don't, I'm wobbling about. He's practicing. <laughs> but that, but, but that, I'm trying that, to get him to change is... legs. <laughs> 
that's great. That's great for everybody to hear because I think for a lot of people, they would start panicking, worrying, being concerned about those sort of issues oh, yes. that come in. Be concerned. Write it in the diary. It started teeth grinding on this day. It's not the end of the world. You know, make sure that you go to somebody who is actually going to teach you how to get the horse a little bit longer in the frame, a bit work, more, bit more working through. You know, don't worry about it. It's a phase. They go through them. They go through so many phases. And if you get worried about the phases without breaking them down, suddenly you get in trouble. You know, don't get wound up about it. And Jeff, for Jeff, do that transition a little bit <laughs> further back for you. <laughs> and for you now, he's done, he's done the viaduct, he's done the breakdown of the little brush here, he's done exactly what you've asked, he's oh, got a little no. bit tired, you're We're now do done. More. Yeah, you're done with him, yeah? I mean, the poor thing got on the lorry at five o'clock this morning and we've travelled up from, from Suffolk and um, he's a bit knackered, which is good, four-year-olds need to be, he'll go home and have a wee bit of a holiday. Um, he hasn't done any of this sort of stuff at all um, because he's only been in work three weeks. You know, that's fine. He's four. But, but he's easy as a rider to say, I want to do more, I want to go and jump more, but you have, to, you have to relate to the horse you're sat on. Yeah, but, you know, he's had quite a nice little break just walking around yeah. chatting to everybody and, and he, we're going to just pop a few more and, and, you know, if he doesn't do everything, that's not the end of the world. But what, what he is doing is he's answering my questions. He's made a mistake. Who cares? Yeah, that's horses. And that it's, he's, just, he's it's just very good to say, yeah. do you know what? It's okay. Yeah. Jeff, how are you doing with your cross pole? Jeff, how are you getting on? I'm just uh, <laughs> <laughs> practicing landing on the correct leg. I've got those two, two fences around the corner now. So, what I'm trying to establish mm. is that I can go from one fence to the other and keep it on its left mm. leg. It's a bit like I didn't bear back because my stirrups are too long, so... <laughs> they don't go up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I want you to get through my skinny fence. Excuses, excuses, that's how not to do it. <laughs> I'll keep going. It might, it might help, Jeff, if you, if you start calling him or her. <laughs> she might respond better. <laughs> I don't know. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, just go the other way, will you? Hey. <laughs> Check you, you out, Jeff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was worried this was going to end up into a heavy breathing thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm allowed. I'm on off season. <laughs> the hat doesn't well, fit. So, the job okay, doesn't fit. <laughs> talk to us because Jeff, Jeff needs to get his breath back. Talk, uh, talk us through then, Caroline, off-season, because obviously the eventing season in, in Europe is, is basically from February, <laughs> if you, if you want to go out onto the Sunshine Tour in Spain, right the way through until October, November. Mm. You're, in, you're in your off-season. You already said your britches are too tight and your hat's too tight. I hope you don't mind me telling too many people that. Obviously, you're too late now. Um, but what, what is it? What is your regime? What, how, do you, how do you keep fit? And you've got to go for your operation in a week's time as well. I guess I don't keep fit at the moment. Um, this is the, the guilty pleasure of winter is, you know, you get your winter puff on. Um, but going through um, Peter O'Sullivan House, um, they have this wonderful thing, and it's called Get Fit for Race Riding. <laughs> so we'll I start. did that when I went to Epsom. I rode the Derby. Um, I lost two stone in four weeks. It yeah. was the most miserable time I'm of my entire that, but life, but I raised a lot of half money. Stone would be nice. <laughs> I ra raised a lot of money for a Will Be Ronda pony and all of that cause, and it was amazing. But um, I, I, it is a hard time of the year. No, it is, but it's also a lovely time of year because you don't, you know, if it rains, you just think, oh, well, I'll go and do something else for the day, which, you know, we, we as, as event riders don't really get because it is so full on, you know. So we would, from March right the way through to October, be away every weekend, and it's, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, full on, and then, you know, those horses that have been off over the weekend, you've then got to pick up because you've got a competition the following weekend, so you never really get a break. So this time of year, I don't worry too much about very much, and it's all, you know, catching up with people and, and actually having a bit of a life, which is very important, but we're quite lucky moving down to um, Newmarket as we've picked up a wee bit. It's all right. <laughs> Jeff, what about you, the fitness side? What about what? The, fi the fitness. <laughs> fitness, Jeff. Fitness side. Fi fitness? Yeah. It doesn't, it, it doesn't include when you jump a puissance. 
when you jump, when yeah. you jump that piece on the well, wall, I think, I think, it doesn't doesn't count when you put your beer I've on the wall. I've never been in a ring where I can't freaking speak, and I've got two now. Jump the wall and pick <laughs> your beer up on the on the landing. I picked the piece up because there are only three fences. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm fit enough to go around the Hickshead Derby at the moment. <laughs> so, Jeff, how do you keep yourself fit? Because, I mean, you, you, you've been around, I mean, you, you know, synonymous and household names since the 70s, 80s. You've, you've done and won so many things, medals galore. But how do you keep yourself fit? How do you keep motivated in, in the way that you keep going as well? Okay, I, do, I do still ride quite a lot. I like riding. Uh, I think new horses are a challenge. Uh, just with this one here, it was it was annoying me that it, I couldn't get it to land on its left and its right leg. I'm not saying it'll change legs now, but just what I was trying to get it doing here was cantering hmm? and landing on either side of the leg. So there I get it to Sandra. There I Ask get it. Question. Go and say to her. <laughs> Friggin' hell. Don't bump into her, pal, we'll come off worse. <laughs> <laughs> so there I get it to land on its right leg. And then I'm gonna come around the corner and get it to land on its left leg. Because what we want to achieve, even with young horses, when we're going around the course, we want it to be smooth. We want them to land on whichever leg we want them to. So it's important that we do the same thing over and over again, and then they get to know what we want. And what I've just been telling this horse, you can see there, I'm gently pushing it from side to side there, and then I'll ask it to go straight. The perfect show jumping round when you watch Scott Brash riding around the Global Champions Tour. He looks like he's sat there doing nothing. He's doing a lot, but he's got his horse so finely tuned that the slightest movement that he makes, the horse responds to his movement. The only thing you might see him doing every now and again is just maybe just leaning back for a stride. And there he's putting some manners on it, doing a a very mild half halt, just getting the horse to collect, to wait, but at the same time, he's still keeping the back end coming forward. At no time do we want to be pulling the horse's head back to us. You know, you see some riders and they get on and they're swinging their head about like this. What's, what's that telling the horse? We've got to try and think what the horse is thinking. <laughs> so now the horse is thinking, he wants me to go left, he wants me to go right, he's want to, he's, now he's coming up with his hands. What's, what's going on here? Stay in the box with your hands and do the rest with your legs. Just take one right off. Just take one right off. Has anyone ever watched Jeff on YouTube doing impressions of other riders? <laughs> we, might get, we might get him doing that later. Jeff? They've took my career away, you know, because <laughs> in the olden days, all the riders had their own styles. So I could pick up the mannerisms and blow them up like your Mike Yarwood, or your Rory Bremner's do. But nowadays, they all ride the same. You know, they've all done the training, the training. <laughs> this horse now, you can see, it's starting <laughs> to relax, so it, it'll start Sheep. to carry itself now. Sheep. So I can cant around, let go of my reins a bit, and it's still staying in its canter, there. So I should be able to come to that cross, stay in that rhythm. You can't, oh, that one. That's good. Whoa, lean back and stop. Good. Very good. Thank you, carry good. on. Lesson learned. <laughs> Right, so we've just had a little pop around over all those and that's absolutely fine. So, you know, he's done enough of them now. I'm quite happy with that. It's only trot. It doesn't matter. It was nice to see yeah. that he learned from those early yeah. mistakes, but also because you didn't make an issue of it, he was kind of cool about doing 
the next job, just going between the, the wings and going between the flags, because you didn't say he had done a bad job. He just had made a mistake, and no. you said, that's OK. And yeah, Learn from it. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, horses, they're, they're not perfect, as we're not perfect, as nothing's perfect in life. And, you know, if you don't break it down and make them understand, forever they're just always running out and they're, they're doing things, and you're just like, what? You know, if you don't make it so simple for them, step one, step two, it's like arithmetic. If you don't learn your one times table, you can't do the two times table. If you don't learn, you know, th it's no different. And if you can't do the nine times table, you go back to the eight times before you can do them. Absolutely no different. We're going to go to the water trainer. So I'm going to hang on to my reins and my neck strap. And again, just very quietly, what are we going to do? Oh, perfect. Oh, let's throw our head up. And again, you're not, you're not telling him off for putting his head up on the landing because he's doing that not because you've kept hold of the rein, but because that is just his mechanism at the moment. That's his defence mechanism at the moment. He will learn to soften to your hand eventually. Yeah, it's just where we are at the moment. You know, he's not ready to go into canter and, and put the pressure onto that nice canter that, you know, Jeff's going for. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's ready just to just to learn his job and to be straight and to when I say go he goes when I say stop he stops and he's landing he's running through the bridle we can sort that out another day that's not an issue but what I like about him is he's he's doing everything I'm asking you know from walk trot oh, one handed again Jeff oh, a bit far off but that's fine because he's taking it on Jeff again just as you came round the corner to the Dodson and Horrell let's mention them, um, <laughs> to the upright here. You, again, pulled her up. Um, why? She was just being a little bit unruly. You know, when, uh, hmm? when we're training, we can't do that in a ring. But I'm just trying to get her on my wavelength. We want to be singing that. off the same hymn sheet. And I would like her waiting for me a little bit more. Coming round, coming round here. Yes? I want to keep her coming forward from behind, but I don't want to... Jeff, running... Jeff, coming forward from behind. Coming forward from behind. Coming back from, from forwards. <laughs> <laughs> explain. <laughs> <You're> like, <well. laughs> oh. Explain, guys, come on. Coming forwards from behind. <laughs> Jeffrey. Coming down the three strides. Up, oh. Annick. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, where's he going now? Oh. But you see, because that is a pole, Jeff can actually make that adjustment because a pole's not actually going to interfere with the jump, okay? So that is perfect. That is wait, wait, wait. The horse isn't waiting, so he can just continue on with the aid. And just repeat, you see? And also, apart from then, uh, making her land on the correct leg, making her life easier, works when you put those few fences together, apart from when you just landed over that red, green, and white upright, and then it all went wrong, and then you pulled her up again. But all of those things help and aid into making the rounds as smooth as possible, correct? Yeah. Yes, correct, correct, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, yeah. correct. Jeff. It's the jumping's the easy bit. It's having the control before the fence, after the fence, keeping the horse have got to be able to go forward, they've got to be able to come back. It's a bit like playing a what do you call them things? An accordion. Accordion. That's it. <laughs> a lot of the younger younger people in here won't know what the hell an accordion is, but so <laughs> Well, actually, there's a question over there that Spencer's going to go to in just one minute. And it's on my reins, why, oh God, here we go, why um, I've got two stoppers on the reins, okay? Now, this is an old thing that um, when I worked for Ian Stark, he always did, and I've just followed, carried on, and it makes total sense. So the rein can go no further than that, and it can come back and go no further than this, because sometimes when you're going along, your Martin Gale does get caught on, on the the bit there. The new trend with the no martingale is, you know, a personal thing. Personally, I don't think that young horses shouldn't go without a martingale. You let it out a little bit longer. 
you know, a martingale helps so much for balance and just a little bit of coordination for them. And, you know, to me, it's a wee bit of a no-brainer. No so all my horses and all the reins that I okay, have, apart try. from the dressage. Sam, try that. Hello. Okay, yeah. I've got a stopper right. there and a stopper there. Now, this stopper stays Oof. as far back as we can. Okay, so oh. it stops the martingale getting hooked <sighs> over these rubbery bits here. So when you go cross-country and sometimes... Yeah, they, they do get caught. The strangest things happen cross country, Roddy. and it's horrible because it's very restricting. Um, so I always go Roddy. with the, the two stoppers. Put your canter down. Over Actually, this round um, cross. Well, whilst Jeff is Over just talking, that happened to me uh, one time cross country round, as I was coming in. I was turning a corner into a combination and fence, down and over the this martin girl green and got yellow. caught over the down over that again. Uh, edge of the rain. Right. And as Caroline said, I have one sticky. either side, mm. and it's just a safety thing, and it's 50p. Um, but, but it's a show huge safety thing. Huh? Show jumping is narrow legal. Huh? Show jumping is narrow legal. Now stay yeah. on that. So FEI. Don't Jeff. start pushing. Jeffrey, would you be quiet? Don't start pushing. <laughs> so Open show your left jumping, hand. when you at a FEI competition, you, you've Open got to take the, the, second, the second stop. Sit off. up, balance. I don't know why. Wait, stay sat up, don't lean forward. Stay upright. That's good. Open your right hand. Very good. It's a girl's ride, Keep cantering ride, round to the green and yellow. Don't push. Sit up. Keep, your, keep it straight. Keep it straight. Look in front of you. That's all right. That wasn't your problem. That was hers. And sit down, lean back, and stop. Whoa, stop her. Now pat her. Can you all hear Jeff and Caroline? Yeah? Anyone struggling? All good. I think, I think we're struggling that side, but you've got all the noise, so just check. I want you to canter around the top again, Brody, and back down over the green and yellow again, please. How did that feel? Did it feel all right? <laughs> Better. Brody, I can. <laughs> Remember, when you turn the corner, you've got to keep straight. It looks good. Don't ask how it feels, Jeff. Keep it on that rhythm. In dressage, Turn they the say, corner, the judge up, doesn't ask how it feels. Up, straighten up. Look in front of you. Good. Fabulous. And sit down, lean back, and stop. She's got a tendency to just run after the fence. So we've got to contain that. That's when we would sit down, lean back, <laughs> have a half halt. As soon as you feel her come back, then you can let, let the handbrake off again. Caroline, are you jumping any more with that? No, I think my four-year-old's done quite enough. It's right. question and answer time. Uh, uh, well, no, there's no, there's no Q&A. We're going to Q&A uh, in oh. the next bit, and we're going to Q&A at the end. So I think I uh, what memo. we'll do for now <laughs> is draw this first demonstration to a close. Um, refreshments obviously available. Do go and grab yourselves a uh, hot and cold drink or some uh, food as well. But for now, just give them a huge round of applause, our demonstrators, and also to Jeff Billington and Caroline Powell.